All right, the one thing that comes to mind here that you need to be made aware of before we move too much further on is that this is an example of defrost termination when freezers are installed whoever installs them wires and positions and connects everything up after the fact so there really isn't a schematic diagram that you're going to be able to follow like on air conditioning and you're one of the difficult things about refrigeration is after years and years you're going to find that previous companies have bypassed or rewired or rigged up things to work so everything's not going to be exactly as you see here but this is a very good example of um, how it should be and it would be um, we'll put in the student downloads a couple of these diagrams so you can have a reference and, and get a, a, a little bit more clear picture otherwise you're going to be chasing wires and um, colors are going to be different and it, it's sometimes it's just a rat's nest and a nightmare all right so let's move on here so the previous video we talked about the moment of the defrost termination and that is that microsecond when the defrost termination and fan delay makes this connection between the red and the brown wire and now completes the circuit for the defrost solenoid valve so so at this point the at this moment we have the defrost solenoid valve has power evap fan is off and the defrost heaters are off, on defrosting still and the solenoid valve is closed so when that contact is made at that instantaneous second the defrost solenoid activates the plunger comes down and pushes the slider the plunger comes down and pushes the slider back all right so when it pushes the slider back it breaks the contact so the solenoid valve pops down pushes the slider back breaks its own power and it pops back up here and it's just sitting there waiting for the next activation of power so solenoid valve moment momentarily pops out pushes the slider pops back in and then it's done so we've now broken the 115 volts to the defrost heaters and the defrost heaters are off but remember this coil is still at um, 55 degrees Fahrenheit so the um, we don't want to be running the fan while the coil is at 55 degrees because then we're blowing 55 degree air into the freezer okay so let's see what ha was happening here so the 115 volts comes up and it goes through terminal 4 and we do have power to the evap fan but as we follow this path around here the neutral comes through the fan delay part of the defrost termination and fan delay and as the um, coil starts to cool down from the defrost the this contact now starts to slowly move back down towards this contact but at this point the fan is not on because it doesn't have a complete path but we have another 115 volts it comes right down here the, of course we've just got done with defrost so the thermostats calling for cooling and we do apply the 115 volts to the solenoid valve the solenoid valve opens the compressor comes on and starts to um, starts the refrigeration process um, cooling that coil down the fan is off at this point but the compressor is on and we're now taking that coil rapidly from 55 degrees down to its operating temperature and as it's doing that it's moving from uh, the defrost termination and fan delay contact is starting to move back down here to its um, freeze position all right so does that make sense solenoid pops down disables its own power it's sitting there dead in the water now we've now de-energized the power to the defrost heaters we have applied 115 volts to the evap fan but it's not running we have 115 volts to the solenoid valve which is open compressors running 
fan is cooling I'm sorry the compressor is cooling and now we're waiting for the um, evap coil to cool down to its operating temperature. 